Welcome to part three of the Excolibrain case study walkthrough. In part one, we started with a completely empty vault and we set up the required plugins and I also introduced you the IBIS dialog mapping framework that we are implementing with Excolibrain. And we also started to set up the basics of our graph. In part two, we went ahead and we added a bit more styling to the graph as well as we talked a bit about synchronizing the navigation between the main document and Excolibrain as well as the embedded frames. And now in part three, we're going to look at some additional formatting and settings just to make you more comfortable with all of this as well as we're going to look at adding some web links to all of uh, to our mind map or our Xcoli brain map. And with that, we're going to close the discussion here. I'm going to post the demo database in the Visual Thinking Workshop Discord space. You can find the link to that in Xcoli Draw. So let me just quickly show you how you find that. If I create a new Xcoli Draw drawing, then here in the center, you see some links. And here, this link, if you click this link, this link is going to, this is a Discord invite. And with this link, you can join the Visual Thinking Discord server. And that's a great place to ask questions about Excolibrain and Excolibrain. You can engage with me as well as with others from the community. And this is where I'm going to post the demo database. So you can also play with that and see all the settings that I've done in the demo that we are doing here right now. So let's continue this example by, first of all, creating this question right here. So I'm going to shift click and create a markdown document. And I'm going to just add my question here. So like this, I'm going to click here and I've added my question. Now you can already see, especially if I turn this off, you will see that this question was created with the style of a question, of course. And you will also see that the two new positions were already created on the side. I'm going to switch back to the embedded mode. And I think let's just come to a point where we can, I'm, I'm just going to create a one more node. We're going to do some formatting around it as well as we're going to add the web link here. So I'm going to create a reduced commute reduces stress. I'm going to shift click on this, create the markdown document. So now I have this here and I'm going to copy my cheat sheet over here and I'm going to paste it in here. So what you will see is suddenly a couple of things have appeared here. So first of all, this up here, the evidence, this is actually a link to a chat GPT chat I had. So this is a web link. The web link is pasted here as a markdown link. So this starts with an alias and it's followed by the actual link. Because it has an alias set, you will see here that this is displayed here showing you the globe. So it recognizes that this is a web link and it uses the alias text. Had I not added an alias here, so I'm going to now delete the alias, then you will see that when Excolibrain updates, then I'm only going to see the link here. So it's good to add links and alias because then it's much easier to look at or read those links. So I'm going to add the alias back like this. And I think we have a couple of, we have a couple of things to do. So let's get started with that because the evidence in my mind should be above the position 
and of course the objecting argument should be on the right hand side and should be read as well as arguments should be formatted as well so let's dive into Excalibrain settings and let's look at these settings so you get good practice with how to do these settings. I'm going to open Excalibrain here and I'm going to scroll down. So first of all, I want to add another type, actually two other type of notes here. So I'm going to press comma and I'm going to add argument and I'm going to add evidence. So now I've added uh, these additional tags here. And once I've added them, I can start to customize them. So first of all, I'm going to choose an argument. And for me, the argument is represented by a scale. So I'm just going to select a scale like this. So it's an argument. So it's, it's like you're weighing the, the various ideas. I'm going to add the scale MOG here and add a space and for me that's actually sufficient and if we want we can also add an icon for the evidence I'm going to just simply add a document so this is going to be this document is going to be the evidence like this now let's also format the relationship so the link style so I'm going to come down here but when I look here, of course, I'm not going to see the link style. Why is that? You guessed it, right? Because I didn't add this to the ontology. So I'm going to show you a third way of adding it to the ontology. So you saw in part one, the context menu. In part two, we looked at the comment palette for adding items to the ontology. Now we're going to use here the unassigned tags and we are going to just copy evidence which should be a parent so i'm going to just write a comma here and paste evidence you will see that from the unassigned list evidence already disappeared and then i'm going to take objecting argument i'm going to again control c copy this and an objecting argument is a next relationship as well. So I'm going to add this to next friends. I'm typing a comma and pasting it here. Now I also have tags here. I have tags here because it's a document property and it was not added to the excluded list already. So I have this excluded list which you can fill with tags that you know are not related to Excalibrain, but you don't want to clutter the unassigned list. So I'm going to take tags and just simply add a comma to the end of the excluded list. And I'm going to paste tags. This is a useful way of organizing your ontology because this way all of your items here are in their right ontology categories, their right directions. You can always check on a sign. So do you have you created new ontology in your document that you haven't yet organized into the various categories? And if it's actually not a an ontology, but some other technical field, then you can also add it to excluded. But now let's scroll down here and let's do the link style settings. So here I'm going to scroll down and first of all, the parent relationship is evidence. We are not going to change that, so we just recognize that. We're going to look at next is an objecting argument. And I'm going to set the objecting argument to red, and I'm going to change the width of this to three. And when I do this, you already see that the evidence is up there and I have the objecting and supporting arguments on the right hand side. Now let's go ahead and first of all let's click on this chat GPT link here. What happens is the browser opens 
and I can just click here to continue my conversation with ChatGPT about this discussion. So this is something you can do in ChatGPT. You can copy a link to your conversation and you can add it to Xcolib Brain or Xcolib Draw and you can just simply reference it later on. You will also see that there's another link up here pointing to chatopenai.com. This is the host and this is interesting if you have multiple pages from the same host. For example, you're using multiple ChatGPT conversations in your Obsidian vault, then through these links it will all come together under the same host. So this was auto-generated by Xcolib Brain. This explicitly does not exist in the vault, but is a good way to connect content from the same web pages. Now there's one more thing I want to show you in terms of creating fields as you write. So this is going to be how it works in practice in real life. So let's just click here maybe on this supporting argument right here. And when I click this, it comes to the center, but it's not yet created. But if I shift click this, then I can create the document like this. So now I have my stress and productivity note here. And what I want to show you is the following that let's just fill in the top section of this document like this. And what I want to add to this node is an evidence. I could of course just write evidence like this with double columns and that's great. But instead of doing this, and I of course misspelled it, so that's exactly the point I want to show you. So instead of this, you can also type triple double column and then this suggester will come up and I can just simply type evidence and I can choose evidence from the list and with that evidence is created here. Now there are also, if I only want to look at parent notes for example, I could also just type and evidence is a parent note. So this is a good example in this case. I could also just type my double colon and then press P and with that I'm only seeing the parent type relationships and then I can choose which parent type relationship I want. And then of course once I have this I can add my evidence right here. So I'm just going to add productivity studies are going to be a document that's an evidence to stress and productivity and you can see that productivity studies appeared up there. So I want to show you a few more settings just to round things up and then with that we are going to close part three and we're going to close this series again. But let me just show you this quickly. So here I'm going to open Xcolib Brain and I wanted to show you this first that of course you can turn off the ontology suggester and then it will not come up. There are some additional settings here. So this is how I knew I need to press double double colon and then P. For all the directions I have the shortcuts and you can of course configure this for yourself. I have this setting and I like this setting. So far you didn't see this and we're going to do a style setting as well to make this really visible. So you can add selected field with bold and I like to turn this on. So instead of field name it's going to add star star field name star star. So it's the markdown bold setting. And also you can see here that this is a pro feature if you will that you can create fields mid-sentence not only at the beginning of the sentence but in the middle of the sentence and here you can choose uh, what type of bracket you want around that. But so let me show you what this bold setting does. If I come back here you can see that evidence is now not a bold 
word but now if I add evidence again then it's going to be added as a bold field now in the base obsidian style the difference is not so strong I like the groove box style so I'm going to show you that of course you might have your own different preference but let me just show you why I like the groove box style and how it formats this so I'm going to click here on appearance and I'm going to search for themes and I'm just going to type in groove box and I'm going to install and use the theme I think for now this is going to be good and what you can see here is the bold text stands out really well because evidence is now clearly a strong yellow and the other evidence is white and of course now these documents are artificial because normally you would have lots of text in your document so then these colors look slightly different but I like this setting to make the fields stand out I like to make them bold from data views and Excalibrain's perspective it makes absolutely no difference if a field is bold or not it is the same field actually also it doesn't make any difference if the field is with all capital letters or all lowercase letters or any mix so evidence is the same as evidence with a capital E so these uh, items are are actually good now if I have two versions of evidence that's not good so and you can see it right here so if within the same document I'm using various cases then data view will recognize them as separate fields and eventually Excalibrain will get confused but again if you're using the ontology suggester then this should not really be uh, an issue for you so I think that's all I wanted to share with you in this demo hopefully this walkthrough gives you a bit of a better idea how to configure Excalibrain how to create different looking nodes how to define relationships in part two we also looked at the setting that was in Excalibraw not in Excalibrain so you can get the idea that some of the features of how Excalibrain looks like will come from Excalibraw overall you have a pretty nice graph here that you can navigate and you can look at this argument you can edit it right here or if you prefer you can have this on the side maybe on the right hand side you can make it also slightly smaller and zoom in like this and do your editing of the document in obsidian's normal text editor and just watch the graph here and as you navigate the graph see how the graph moves and as you add notes to the graph see how it develops or you can edit right within Excalibrain I have a whole bunch of settings here that we didn't look at I recommend that you experiment with that but I didn't want to overcomplicate this demo instead I wanted to show you some of the basic features through a real life example hopefully I managed to achieve that so thank you for watching enjoy Excalibrain and of course if you have questions please use the conversation below this video or come to the visual thinking discord channel and share your thoughts let's have a conversation thank you